Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I've been sitting on a conundrum for a while now and I'm trying to deal with it in this video. The conundrum is that the Orion space plane, not to be confused with the Orion carrier plane, this is the space plane that's supposed to ride on the back of the carrier plane and go into orbit the, from 2001 Space Odyssey. I got I basically made a replica of the 2001 A Space Odyssey Orion space plane and it's supposed to dock with a space station, right? The famous scene with the Blue Danny Waltz playing in the background. It uh, spins around to match the rotation of the station and goes in and docks with it. Uh, well, the problem was that the space station was too small. Uh, it needed to be 30 meters wide, this aperture, in order to accommodate the space plane. And I had made it about half the size it needed to be. So I did the simple thing, which was add tweak scale to it. Uh, the way it works here is that the arms extend. They're all packed up uh, for launch because I intend to launch it. And that's the main problem here. So I intend to launch it, but uh, first we have the whole uh, business of fitting it on a launcher. Now, mass-wise, it can go on the monument launcher. It was originally meant for the monument launcher. It's not that heavy. Uh, it is currently, well, it's 1,629 tons, and it ought to be. That's about the right size. Previously, before it was tweaked, scale, it was like 500 tons, and it was 24 meters in diameter, and that could fit on top of the Orion, uh, sorry, uh, on top of the monument launcher. The monument launcher can launch 3,000 tons, so it could launch this in terms of mass. The problem is the size. It's too big. Uh, the monument launcher's uh, upper stage is only 24 meters, and so it was originally sort of sized okay, but right now it's not, well, it was actually more than 24 meters, but you know, you can make a fairing a little bit bigger. But this is way big. Uh, this is bigger than the core of the monument launcher in terms of its width. But it's not that heavy. That's the catch. I mean, it's hollow, right? I mean, uh, the idea would be that first it has to be assembled and then they would pressurize it and put all this stuff inside. So it's just a hollow structure with nothing inside. and. You know, it's functionally like a fuel tank, and actually the mast is very similar to a fuel tank of this general size. But, yeah, we need a launcher that has a 55 meter upper stage or a 55 meter fairing? That seems difficult, right? So we need something special, something different. We need a station carrier launcher, and so that is what I have developed. So the trick here is that the payload is at the bottom. Because if the payload's at the top, we get a lot more drag, and it's very inconvenient. But in this case, the rocket is on the top, and the payload is on the bottom. And that way, the bottom of the rocket shields the payload. We don't have to have a fairing, and we just have to have the engines extend below it. So, <laughs> so I just, right? Uh, so here we have the engines extending below it, and the whole thing is reusable and it is an SSTO so the engines go up there basically they go into those slots there and then they extend these are uh, each of these has 10 of my ED9 engines a little bit souped up they're ED9 X's and so there's 80 of them all together in order to provide the thrust for this uh, I might need to soup them up a little bit more because right now it says that the sea level thrust weight ratio is 1.05 so, which, you know, which is not great. Um, so that's a problem. And mainly, uh, uh, this tank's mass is the major mass here. It's uh, 2,000 tons dry. And you can sort of see that. It's obviously larger than the station itself. And it's got a heat shield on it so that it can return. It's basically a big dragon capsule. And um, yeah, this delta V is not right. I don't know what the delta V actually is which is another problem. It should be close, but this is not the correct amount, and with that thrust weight ratio, we might need more than I'm thinking. Uh, but yeah, so we have to test it, basically, is uh, what it comes down to. We've got this thing, it's humongous. Uh, you can see with those extended, it's more than 100 meters in width and length, so that's these directions, and it's 127 meters in height with the payload. The payload, incidentally, with it being tweak scaled up is 50 meters up and down and then this is 70 meters or so and so it's it's not as big as the monument launcher because it doesn't have to carry as much right the payload capacity is 1500 tons to orbit or 1600 tons to orbit and 
this is 2,000 tons. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's still less payload requirement than the monument launcher needs. So yeah, that's the idea. The idea is these retractable engines and making an SSTO that comes down like a pod. It's got little thrusters up top there. They, they use hydrogen and oxygen as well. Of course, this is a hydrogen and oxygen thing. And who knows if I put enough ablator. I put 10,000. I don't think that's enough. But well, we'll see. All right, let's bring it outside and see what happens. It doesn't look that big, I guess. I mean, I'm used to things being much bigger than the VAB when I say they're big, so... Yeah. I guess it's okay. Uh, throttle up, SAS on, ignition. This may take a while. Seems like they've got the stock plumes still. I don't know. Anyway, okay, launch. It's not like it's gonna go up in a hurry. Okay. So yeah, uh, it says 10,000 there, but I don't think that's our actual delta V and we're going so slow that it's gonna be a problem anyway. But yeah, this whole idea of an underslung payload is not something you see very often, right? So it's a novel idea. And in this case, a necessary idea. There's really no good option. If you actually make a stage under it and have the huge fairing around it, uh, that's very inefficient. And the huge stage isn't necessary because it's actually pretty light because it's hollow. This is functionally like a pregnant guppy, right? The plane that's used to transport rocket stages and stuff like that. Uh, the stages are hollow, so they're not very heavy, but they're very voluminous. And so this is to space payloads what the pregnant guppy is to payloads around Earth. We're assuming differential throttle on these. That's their quote-unquote gimbal. That's a lot of electric... I don't know where it got that electric charge from. I should have uh, been a little bit slower to turn here. I've kept it pretty simple. Uh, there's more details I could work in. Also, I, I sort of wanted like maybe landing legs on uh, sort of these these bits having some sort of landing apparatus. Oh, sorry, I'm not capturing my cursor. Whoops. Been doing more of those special things that don't require a cursor. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Actually, our trajectory was off anyway. But yeah, I was thinking about putting landing legs on, but anyway, the ignition. I mean, that's sort of more like, are they real plume? Uh, the sound makes it sound like the stock sound. Smoke screen says it's doing something. But what do I do if I can't make orbit? We could dump supplies from here. It is carrying some extra, including fuel cell propellant. I, I think we can dump that. I decided to add some solar panels to it anyway. Oh, you know what? I believe that. If we add another stage in here, it gives us a more reasonable number, so we're probably not going to make it. Alright, let's... Okay, so I've decided to dump the hydrogen and oxygen, well, most of the hydrogen and oxygen. Some of it is necessary for the RCS on the station itself, because it needs to spin up, among other things. and. Uh, otherwise, I'm keeping the food, water, and oxygen, but I think we might w want to dump that. However, it turns out that after dumping the hydrogen and oxygen, at least to the extent that I have, uh, we were under mass, or less than what I thought. It seems like tweak scale isn't doing what I thought it would do with the mass of this, and so I've actually added lead weight to it. Uh, so we're keeping the supplies, and I've added lead ballast to make sure that we're at least a thousand tons. So we're trying to carry a thousand tons here. And that, I think, is a fair mass for this, uh, given that it's supposed to be empty, but we're currently actually carrying a little bit more than just an empty shell. Uh, not something I want, but anyway, the goal is to test the carrier, and we'll deal with the finicky business afterwards. So, once again, testing the carrier to see, can it get a thousand tons to low Earth orbit? Now, this is underperforming a bit. Uh, I have a SSTO Aerospike that I've used before and it's 17,000 tons and can get 900 tons to low Earth orbit. 
there's 32,000 tons, we'd expect much better performance than we're getting right now. Uh, the problem is that it's got a lot more drag. It's physically larger and the arms in particular get a lot more drag. They're acting like air brakes. So that's what we're contending with. And let's see if we can get around that. I thought it would be able to bring 1,500 tons, but right now, well, because of uh, another factor is just the low thrust weight ratio because I can't fit enough engines on here the way that we're retracting them. So the whole system limits how much thrust I can put at the bottom. And that is another problem. So let's see. Ignition. And launch. Boom, seem to look different this time. Anyway. Still a slow ascent. Let's see what we get though. Okay, turning. I don't know if the payload is also getting some unwanted drag somehow. That depends on FAR. Oh, it looks like it's actually real plume right now. Oh, but I've got these secondary plumes over there. Uh, not too sure about those. Let's try ignore those. Those happen sometimes and I don't know why. It's tight, and I think we're just barely not going to make it here. One problem is our apoapsis isn't actually in space right now, but we're almost done. Close, but this wouldn't be able to get back too, so that hurts its uh, reusability here. And I forgot about residuals, but that's not the only thing that's hurting this. Um... I'm gonna try and soup up the engines a little bit so that we get off the pad a little bit more decisively and hopefully that will make up the difference. So we'll just say we operate the engines with uh, higher chamber pressure and that's our story. Alright. Okay, so I souped up the engines. They now get each a little over 5,000 kilonewtons. Still not M1 levels, but uh, they're actually physically smaller than M1, so they shouldn't be getting M1 level thrust. Then again, they're staged combustion, so, you know, that comes with a higher chamber pressure and also the fact that you can make a smaller engine and get more thrust out of it. So, yeah, but we're, we're pushing it here a little bit, so let's hope we don't need more than this. Now we have 1.29 sea level thrust weight ratio, and let's see if we can get to orbit while still reserving enough fuel so that this can deorbit itself, keeping in mind that its dry mass is still uh, more than 2,000 tons. So, yeah, my throttle's not working for some reason. Okay, throttle, SAS, ignition. And launch. Up it goes. Well, a little bit better. but not, as it were, monumental. Width-wise, it's much larger than the monument launcher, though. Interesting sort of deal here, this station carrier. Now, let's see our actual Delta V up. Uh, it's, it's getting down there. Trying to keep to the prograde vector here. Okay, throttling down. Let's see if we get something good here. It's going to be tight though. And yeah, in theory it's supposed to land using the engine thrusts, which is tough. Obviously we're not going to be landing something this huge with parachutes. But landing it with the engine thrust is not easy either. Okay... Oh, well, I stopped it a little bit too soon because the periapsis is just above the atmosphere. It says 5 meters per second. Um, well, uh, that's not good enough for its recovery, but then again, we're going to recover it. We're going to deorbit using the RCS, so there is that. And at least right now, we're really close to the atmosphere. But let's try and separate the payload and see if that part works out. Okay, well, payload, okay, RCS, uh, other way. Am 
Well, it's 1,000 tons. There's that. Its acceleration with the RCS is not high. <laughs> but then again, it's not supposed to be. That, that's really only supposed to be used for spinning it up. Let's try and... Here. But we are too low compared to where it needs to be. It's separated. Let's just do what it theoretically ought to do. There we go. And rotate. Textures are a little bit underwhelming, but then again, for something this size, it's tough to give it enough texture. I mean, you can see close up, it's got some bumps going. I was more focused on the very complex animation for it, though. I actually don't know how fast the real thing spins, but I could calculate how much it would take to generate actual gravity in the arms, so... I could do that. But it can spin. That is the important part. It can spin. Now over here... Uh, well... Let's just get to Apoapsis and see if it can deorbit with the RCS. There it goes, spinning away there. Oh, it lost electric charge. No! I didn't know it used that much electric charge. Okay, hold on. We're just for testing purposes, we gotta cheat the electric charge for now. So, raise engines. Oop, that, that animation happens a little bit quickly. I love that we have uh, like more than 200 tons of propellant and it says we have 2 meters per second because residuals, but the RCS doesn't have to deal with residuals, so it can use that 200 tons of propellant. Yeah, plenty of fuel to spare and we've got a good periapsis. I say plenty of fuel to spare, but not for the engines. <laughs> we can't land with this. There's not enough to land with. But the ablator is a whole other thing. I don't know how much ablator something this size uses. Probably more than 10,000. Then again, it's huge and empty. So it's got, you know, really good ballistic coefficient for re-entry. With the 80 engines, this actually has quite a lot of vertices. It is not a lightweight model by any means. The rest of it is pretty lightweight. The engines aren't. Oh, it doesn't seem too bad. We're, we're starting to ablate, but not a whole lot. Right over the Gulf of Mexico. We're a little bit low to be going at this speed, but... Okay-ish. Mind you, I, I made it a lunar rated heat shield, so... There is that. Well, G-forces will get high. We're not doing a lifting re-entry, that's for sure. Maybe end up in Miami. No, I think we'll fall short. Well, didn't uh, ablate too much. And this is the rate we're slowing down right now. Let's see if I just extend these. Well, that's hard to tell. Oh, uh-oh. That actually changes the aerodynamics, it seems. Wasn't able to hold retrograde anymore. Hmm. Yeah, well, they definitely have some sort of aerodynamic effect. But this is now tumbling all over the place. Well, we don't have a way to recover this, per se. Still 2,277 tons. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's the idea. That is our station launcher. And we have a very distinct purpose to put it to. It's a very unique sort of launcher. 
and well I'll figure it out eventually we we did technically send our station to orbit we just need to optimize it a little bit and we could technically send the Orion space plane to that station maybe I'll do that at some point anyway but for now with this spinning out of control and us having no way of saving it I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time